We're on. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of uh, Delusions of Grandeur. I am one of your hosts, but uh, today we are going to go uh, uh, into some depth on some films that may be slithering your way into your home uh, from time to time. So, uh, Dane, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about tonight's uh, first feature that we'll be talking about, and uh, uh, who uh, uh, who is, I I'm guessing, see, these are picks that I thought that, uh, that you, Dustin, would uh, uh, would like, and uh, I, I thought oh, yeah. that they this meant something uh, personally to you. This is one of my favorite movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So these are your these two movies we're gonna be talking about tonight are your picks for Meet the Cast <laughs> Month and uh, the first of which is the 1997 masterpiece Anaconda, starring Jennifer Lopez as a small town country girl who goes down into the Amazon looking for love, only to find what Robin Williams so delightfully referred to as the throbbing python of love. Except it's not a python, it's an anaconda. <laughs> and it's much bigger and more deadly than even she could have imagined. But uh, yeah, as, as, as Robin Williams also said, one too many hits with the snake. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what the whole movie is. But this this masterpiece was nominated for worst picture, worst director, worst screenplay, worst actor, worst screen couple, and worst new star. Which means that it must speak to the hearts of many and it has because it is now <laughs> a beloved cult classic also starring the uh star of are we there yet ice cube who is not <laughs> yeah. who is not known for anything else that is remotely harder edged than that and uh, absolutely nothing and the star of the National Treasure films, John Voight, who is also not known for any higher quality work whatsoever. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's got quite the cast here. And Danny Trejo, pre Spy mm -hmm. Kids, and pre mm -hmm. uh, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, and of course the almost Marty McFly, Eric Stoltz, as well. <laughs> and not yet star Owen Wilson, uh, who had not yet had his big break in movies like Marley and Me. Or The and, Haunting. Uh, and The Haunting. Uh, and of course, um, what was that one? I was trying to make well, it. I forget the one much. 2010. I forget the one 2010 movie he was in that like bombed really bad. But, oh, hello, kitty. Uh, but yeah, so we've got, we got quite a... Uh, Quite a smorgasbord oh. of talent for you, including, <coughs> uh, including the voice of Frank Welker as uh, the Anaconda itself. How about that? Um, but yeah, this film is about a documentary film crew uh, led by the lovely Jennifer Lopez in one of her earlier film roles. Uh, this would have been after... Uh, in Living Color, where she was a fly girl, but before um, her music career really took off. Um, but she was obviously well known for dancing uh, at the time. But the, again, this was before On the Six, uh, but it was around the time, same year as uh, U-Turn, if I remember correctly. And, about a month, and a month after Selena came out. That's right. Um, so she was mm. still relatively green, not unlike the titular snake. Um, she was relatively green, as were a lot of these other people that I mentioned, <laughs> and uh, the screenwriters, uh, well, there were three of them, but one of them was the, the uh, well, I say acclaimed kind of generously, the uh, Jim Cash and Jack Epps Jr. team. Uh, well, I say acclaimed more so in the box office sense because they were one of the, they were the screenwriters of Top Gun, so obviously they uh, have quite a lot of box office appeal to their name. But, uh, yeah, so it's about a documentary film crew, and they go down to the Amazon in search of the Sher uh, Sherry Shamas. Shamas yep, in the Amazon. And through a series of unfortunate events, they encounter the very Paraguayan uh, <laughs> uh, John Voight, who is uh, a snake hunter who... Per 
he proposes to lead them through the Amazon safely, only to find that he's a little bit like this movie's equivalent of Captain Quint from Jaws, except not quite as amicable and not quite as well-intentioned as he in inadvertently leads them into a trap in order to catch the famed Anaconda. In a sense, you could almost call him a Captain Ahab, sort of, in, in a way. In a yeah, sense, I think that's more I mercenary. Think that fits, yeah. He is an older man who is trying to tame the one-eyed snake. I think we can all sympathize. <laughs> uh, which, which technically this snake has two eyes, but if your snake has two eyes, you should probably see a urologist. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so let us uh, go around the room. We should probably start with Dustin because this was his pick. Um, and I'm delighted to do hosting duties for this one just because you're feeling a wee bit tired and I don't blame you one bit so why is this one of your favorite films and when did you first see it? Well, I first saw it um, around when it came out on VHS in the 90s um, I've reptile movies are kind of my favorite genre and I really enjoyed this movie like it's a very solid competent monster movie uh, despite what a lot of people say <laughs> mm -hmm. And, um, well, uh, that's kind of it. I mean, there's not, it doesn't have a whole lot of depth to it. Like, it has fairly good looking snakes. Um, it, it has fairly good looking other things as well. I see. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. Well, so. it, well, it does. It's got beautiful scenery. It's good. It shows off the Amazon jungle very oh, nice. I thought that was a Jennifer Lopez joke. <laughs> well, it is, but, you well, know, but. Be. It is, but it's not just that. It's got, yeah. you know, a lot going for it. And I will say the uh, animatronic snake. I, I like that you see that more than you see the CGI variety. Yeah, the CGI snake that they use in a couple scenes is not as good. Nah, it hasn't aged all that <laughs> well. Kindly. But uh, it, it passes for the most part. And... Um, yeah, you know, there's the stuff for the people is kind of melodramatic, but for the most part, it works. So there's, there's a lot to enjoy in this movie. And you gotta love John Voight uh, trying to pull off a Paraguayan accent. Oh, accident. God. <laughs> uh, uh, what about our dear Jake? What did you think of this man versus snake extravaganza? <laughs> well, this is. Not a first viewing, but it is the first time in a pretty long time. Um, I think I saw this probably not long after it came out. It might have been on the strength of Selena, because I did know Jennifer Lopez from that movie. And um, <clears throat> that may have been part of my interest. And also, um, though my interest in the man has dimmed over the years as I've come to learn more about his uh, personality and, and politics, but uh, uh, John Boyd uh, is a very interesting actor, and here he <laughs> he really does play the creepy mercenary to the hilt, uh -huh. and f funny accent aside, He's pretty menacing in this movie, so I, I do like that. And um, I had always remembered them, and I remembered Eric Stoltz for some reason, even though he as an actor does not stick in my brain. I remembered his name. Somehow forgot Ice Cube was in this. And, you know, in fairness, uh, Danny Trejo had already done Desperado, Owen Wilson had already done Bottle Rocket, but when I saw this movie, they were still unknown to me. So I uh -huh. totally forgot they were in it. And that was a nice surprise. And um, so just revisiting this, I always remember Dave, Dave puts has that image there. The image that stuck in my brain. One of the stupidest bits of visual effects in any movie I've ever seen. <laughs> and that has always been imprinted on my brain but otherwise i remembered it being a good <laughs> dumb fun kind of movie and uh watching it again it's a good dumb fun kind of movie <laughs> i mean the science where anacondas are concerned is ludicrous at least oh, a lot of it yeah. is and uh and parts of it uh you know but 
overall, it's an enjoyable movie. And you see my particular image. I had to go with that because I'm like, if you're watching a monster movie, a creature feature, any sort of movie, anything you're up against, if it makes Danny Trejo shit his pants the way he is in that picture, you know you're in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) You can't handle the snake, and he clearly couldn't. Uh, What about you, Forrest? All right, so I, you know, I've always known known, known about this movie. Like I remember seeing the po- I remember seeing the posters at move at uh, at my local movie at my local movie theater in Syracuse uh, growing up. Um, but I never got around. But I only just barely got around to watching this movie this weekend. Uh, and I and I think and uh, it's it's pretty. Uh, I'll admit it's pretty it's pretty silly, but a pretty fun creature feature. Um, John, almost John John Voight playing. Uh, Playing a Latin, playing a Latino, I just found very, very. I mean, as bad. I mean, as bad shit crazy as he is in real life, and as much as he was a good villain in most roles. Um, oh God, he was just this, he was just laughably bad here. Bad here. Um, he didn't hold a candle to Christopher Walken in the rundown. Oh hell, no. oh definitely not. Um, <laughs> Or Can you imagine how much that, he does? This movie would have been. I mean, I I enjoyed the movie, as you can no doubt surmise. But I think it would have gone into the stratosphere if that had been Christopher Walken instead. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh God, Christopher Walken as as the Continental guy would have been would have been uh, would have been perfect for this. Um. Uh, <laughs> well, because he kind of was this character a little bit in so, the rundown. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And he was hysterical in that. But uh, but yeah, I mean, but um, yeah, there was some like some you know I, I thought it was like you know it was it was a silly, stupid but fun creature feature. Um, J Lo looked hot as you know, always looking hot as hell. And uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, I was not. But yeah, beyond but yeah, and I knew Ice Cube was. I knew Ice Cube was in this movie. Um, but I was like surprised to see like like some of the supporting like. Uh, like uh, ice, like Eric Stoltz and Kari Wurr mm-hmm. and Owen Wilson. I had no, and Jenny Trejo seeing them all in, uh, like all of them in early role, like in or uh, very under the either early or under the radar roles. Um, and I also thought there was some pretty good. There was there was there was some good gross. There was also you know as someone who likes I like a good I love I love gross out moments, and this movie had plenty of them, uh, yeah. even if the characters aren't always doing the smartest things. Like why like. They go in the Amazon River knowing that there's deadly cre- knowing that there's deadly creatures in there. It's like why would they do like they like they keep get going in the river, and it's like okay, they, there's all these deadly critters in there. Why are you why do you keep going in there? Mm-hmm. Uh, Which, not just I mean, Anaconda, but like piranha, you know, uh, like piranhas and other other. <laughs> Which that, not not to get too far ahead, but I do like kind of earlier on when they do touch on some of the the various non snake related living things that also right. exist in the Amazon. The that can, well, yeah. that can kill oh, you Kandiru. just as easily. Yeah. The black one, yeah. The There's well, all, all kinds you know, of I, things. I read years ago that the natives <laughs> down there are much less afraid of piranha than they are of stingrays. Oh, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sting, if there's any lesson that we learned from our dear uh, Steve Irwin, it's not to underestimate a stingray. Right, um, indeed. It cost him his life. Yeah. Um, Roger, are you just auditing the class, or did you want to uh, offer up your thoughts on this film? Well, I, unfortunately, I can only uh, laugh and have fun with, with this point. <laughs> but uh, definitely having a lot of fun. Oh, good. Um, what about our dear uh, Brandon? Well, this is not my first time watching it. I had always heard of this film via reputation, for better or for worse. Uh, and my mother-in-law is still scared to death of this film. <laughs> um, but she's scared to death of snakes. Um, uh. But for me, I don't remember when I first saw this. I think that it actually the first Anaconda movie I saw was Blood Orchids and um, rough so uh, I saw it 
much later. I remember catching it and I kept getting the sequels, but I never but I never found a cheap copy of the original out in the wild. And then eventually when I finally found it, I was like, oh, I need to watch this. And I was impressed by the star power they had in this film. Uh, I guess much like Grizzly 2, The Revenge, you, you can have some quite impressive cast in these movies. Um, so with that, I did enjoy it, and I thought it was a fun romp. And this time around, I also thought it was a fun romp. Uh, a fun rumble in the jungle, you might say. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and then what about our dear Dave? Well, um, this was definitely not my first time uh, watching this film. In fact, this film, uh, I saw it in the theaters, um, believe it or not, uh, back in 1997 when it was uh, still out in theaters. Uh, I saw it with my mentor at the time that uh, uh, took me to places. <laughs> he would take me to, like, <laughs> some horrors, uh, some um uh you know some foreign f f f films but this one i remember uh, i i i purposely went and took him to it because he would fall asleep in the theaters and i wanted to, i wanted to, to take him to something he'd actually stay awake through so <laughs> um but um this to me is like the jaws of snake films uh, <laughs> uh, 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 that's out uh, there. Uh, there. Uh, besides, maybe Slither. Hmm. Um, Slither is another snake mo uh, uh, mo a movie that uh, that is a phenomenal uh, movie. But uh, but uh, this this one tops it. Yeah, obviously they were slugs. Yeah, or versus Python. <laughs> uh, but uh, but this one to me uh, to me uh, 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 this uh, this one to me uh, me. I remember there were being a lot of hype about it at the time, and I enjoyed it. I mean, I really enjoyed it at the at the time. Uh, uh, the snake, it looked really real to me in the in the theater at the time. You know, I mean, it was 1997. Uh, nothing had come out uh, like that real looking. You know, so uh, so to me, the CGI held up at that time. Now seeing it again. Okay, maybe some of the CGI is a little like dull, but uh, but um, uh, to me the scenes are still enjoyable to see. Uh, see. And I, I I'm sorry, but that uh, that that part where you see Owen Wilson's entire body in the snake is the fucking yeah. best part of the fucking <laughs> film. I don't really care what y'all think because that is the best cinema on earth. No, just I will not I will not fight you on that. That was a, that was a good moment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, uh. <laughs> to, to well. suspend the um, uh, suspension of, of belief that a snake can swallow you whole. What other movie has done that? <laughs> Nothing. So <laughs> well, I mean, snakes uh, that so yes, large snakes are known <laughs> for swallowing things whole that are much bigger than they are although in this case this is a abnormally large snake but i mean you know that part is sound as far as oh yeah that's sound it it's the outline of the scream that's a uh, absurd yes exactly <laughs> uh, well for myself uh this last sunday was the first time that i ever saw the film i it oh. had been on my list for a while um I remembered in 2004 seeing... So we the, have a couple of anaconda virgins. Yes, indeed. Nope. The snake, uh, <laughs> it was my first my first time taking the snake, and I took it like a champ. Um, but the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, I remembered seeing the uh, sequel, Anacondas, The Hunt for the Blood Orchid. I remember seeing that advertised like hell back in 2004. Was way too young to see the movie, but I remembered seeing the ad there, um, and I didn't put two and two together for a good number of years that it was a sequel to this. Um, but at any rate, yeah. So this was my first time seeing it. I was really glad to have seen it because I had heard that it was one of the you know best you know kind of so bad it's good kind of cheesy films, and uh, I think it definitely succeeds at having you know that kind of B movie tone. 
Uh, but with some A-level talent, uh, a lot of A-level talent that had yet to kind of come into its own. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that it definitely accomplishes what it sets out to be. It's very, it, it is a creature feature, but it's a very, very 90s one. And I say that affectionately because um, it's like Ice Cube is sort of being, you know, a, he is an, admittedly a, a token in this film. Uh, but he, uh, I was glad that, spoiler alert, I was glad that he and Jayla were the two to survive because they were the best characters by far. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, they had the most personality and the most, you know, things about them that really worked. Um, mm -hmm. But it's like just a lot of the tropes of the time. You had, you, know, you had like the token black guy, you have the you know, beach blonde stoner guy, you have, you know, your final girl, you have some of the slasher tropes although it's not a slasher film but you know a lot of those things but it uh manages to come together in a package that i found to be very uh amusing and very fun and you don't have to take it too seriously because nobody else really is except i do think that uh and i've said this before and i'll say it again i really think that jennifer lopez as an actress i think that she never really got a lot of Praise up until um, Hustlers, which was really, really good. And she, yeah. but like she never really got a lot of praise for her acting. And I feel like here, uh, despite the silliness going on around her, I think that she did a good job of kind of bringing it down to earth when it needed to be. And uh, you know, she just—if only she just were not so hard to look at. You know, that really distracted it <laughs> from everything. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I quite enjoyed it and I, I've always felt like she, uh, was a better actress than people often gave her credit for. And I think right. was, uh, she was probably the best one there. Um, and she really helped ground the movie when it needed it. Um, and mm -hmm. I also just like the adventurousness of it. You know, it's like, we don't really have a whole lot of like adventure films left that, uh, aren't you know on fantasy worlds and that kind of stuff it's like it's nice to have like an old school adventure um but uh at any rate so the biggest wasted potential in the film which again he was still kind of unknown at the time but for me danny trejo out of everybody like he <laughs> probably should have been in the if not christopher walken and preferably if they still wanted him to be Paraguayan or, you know, a Latino person, they probably should have made Danny mm -hmm. Trejo the villain. Like, I think he would have, mm -hmm. he would have really intensified it, you know. We, we should say in fairness that a large percentage of the South American population is European. Yeah. And that yeah. in particular in Brazil, Chile, and some of the, you know, there's a lot of Nazi well, expats down there. Yeah. Also, yeah. It's, not, it's not unusual to have come across somebody like him in in that country that would have been a citizen there. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and yeah, I mean, there are a lot of, you know, whatever nationality you are doesn't necessarily correspond with what race is common in that region either. Um, you know, so it, it would make sense on that level, you know, right. uh, but, you know, just in terms of sheer menace and in terms of, right. uh, you know, really kind of taking the movie to another level, I kind of feel like Danny Trejo, if he had been the, in <laughs> that role, I think he would have really intensified the whole thing, mm -hmm. which is not to say that John Voight isn't trying. It's just more so that he gets mm -hmm. into like really campy territory and i think that the dialogue probably doesn't help him much but um yeah it, but anyway i mean the opening there with danny trejo he is the his poacher partner who is the first victim of um the snake or uh he would be if he hadn't killed himself um but uh what's interesting about that is that it did this movie did make me it has nothing in common with creature from the black lagoon outside of the physical location which is the amazon um that's like the only thing it has in common but like uh it did make me realize just how much i love creature from the black lagoon because it is you know human beings from civilization going down to the one of the primordial uh cradles of civilization you know that and like the fertile crescent and a couple other places 
but like the Amazon is like that's if you want life, you got life right there, and mm -hmm. all manners of highly dangerous forms of life mm -hmm. because there's so much of it, mm -hmm. and uh, it just reminded me of of what made that mm -hmm. movie work. And uh, there's a little bits here and there that I'm like, yeah, that uh, that's set up for a story because you're on a boat, you're fragile, you're vulnerable. And there's a million mm -hmm. things out there trying to kill you, even mm -hmm. without a snake being in the picture. Uh, that it helps it's like to Australia for move. kids a little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, s speaking of for kids, uh, we have everyone's favorite family man, Ice Cube, uh, <laughs> who, which I'm not even kidding about that because of like the all the kids right. we did. Right. Oh yeah. You you realize there are whole generations of kids who have no idea that he was even in NWA, <laughs> and, right. you know, they just think of him as the guy in the kids' movies, you know. Right. Uh, Friday. Yeah, Friday, which, hey, you know, and I, I make fun, but hey, you know, Ice Cube was really good in Friday, and that really showed just what all he could do. Um, mm -hmm. And it showed that, you know, and I I also make fun that, you know, given the standards of the time that he is essentially a token black guy, but that being said, he really makes the role his own, and you feel that he gives authenticity to a part that would otherwise be very caricature, uh, largely because I am sure that they probably tailored the part just for him. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it does give it a bit more authenticity than it might otherwise have. Um, and even uh, Jennifer Lopez as a documentarian, you know, I could have actually bought that also, you know, because Jennifer Lopez, mm -hmm. as beautiful as she is, and she really, really is even today, uh, as mm -hmm. beautiful as she is, she always, I mean, there's a reason why one of the hit songs is Jenny from the Block, because she has not, you know, really lost the ties to the kind of background that she had, and also just that she could, you know, be someone that could come from humble beginnings, because, well, she did do that. And, uh, you know, so I could, I could buy her as someone that has the kind of... Um, spirit that she has to assemble a crew to go down to uh to document the Shirashamas tribe um mm -hmm. and to do all this stuff like i i bought that you know she seems mm -hmm. like the kind of person that would do something like that and have the tenacity that it takes to do that albeit they were kind of a small skeleton crew but you don't really need a massive crew for a documentary like that um mm -hmm. but we're joined by uh D the production manager Denise Kalberg, played by Carrie. How do you say her name? Were uh, Were uh, Yeah, and then sound engineer and boyfriend uh, Gary Dixon, played by Owen Wilson. Oh wow! Uh, and then uh, the talent uh, Warren Westridge, played by Jonathan yes. Hyde, who yeah. was in. Uh, he was in this film, nominated for Worst Picture, and he was in the Best Picture winning Titanic as uh, J. Bruce uh, Esme. Nice. Uh, if I'm saying that correctly, Esme. Um, but um, yeah, so he covered the spectrum that year. And right. uh, he was also in The Mummy uh, a few years later. And of course, the. Uh, oh, right. The, he is yeah. that guy. Yeah. Holy crap, I never realized that. Yeah, and of course, and I, uh, I like I, I like uh, I like a word on him real quick. I like how they did the ultra snooty, ultra British narrator of the documentary. Is I this know. like that, that was just a yeah. nice because that was actually very believable in a sense. I was gonna say, I mean, now, to be there are a lot of kind of stereotypes in this film. But right. like uh, he clearly <laughs> knows he's playing a stereotype, but he has fun with it, as right. I sus as I suspect that Ice Cube probably was also and Owen Wilson because they are all mm -hmm. stereotypes, but they are having mm -hmm. fun with it, and I think he especially mm -hmm. was probably having a lot of fun with it because he <laughs> he is your ultra snooty British guy, but like he's also the temperamental talent. You know, like mm -hmm. the one person that, you know, has to be in front of the camera and everything. Mm -hmm. And he, he's really having a good time with it. Um, <laughs> and Eric Stoltz, you know, talk about an easy paycheck for him because he's not even in the movie all that much because he's, <laughs> he's taken out of it for most of it. And it's like, geez, you know, you lose the role of Marty McFly. 
you're in Pulp Fiction only a little bit. I mean, memorably, but a little bit. And then you get mostly taken out of the movie here. It's like, geez, yeah. you know, this guy gets shafted every five seconds, or or, um, he's, like, or, or he's or he's like covered in or he's covered in pro, under layers of prosthetics and mask. Exactly. See, I I will remember um, Stoltz for the Fly Two and Flu yeah. and uh, and uh, being in Caprica. The also, uh, uh, some kind of wonderful with uh, with uh, Leah Thompson and uh, Mary mm-hmm. Stuart Masterson. Yeah. Right. yeah, The Fly Two is an underrated movie. We should talk about that sometime. It's um, really good. Yeah, I, I think it's better than a lot of critics did. Um, but then uh, Boat Skipper Mateo, played by Vincent uh, Castellanos, I think is how you say that. Um, and he played Spider Monkey in The Crow, City of Angels. And uh, hmm. that's our crew there. And we, we meet them all as they're getting ready to get on the boat. And it's clear that uh, Jennifer Lopez hmm. and Eric Stoltz have not seen each other in a while. And that there's a little something, something going on between the two of them. Mm-hmm. But we don't really know a whole lot about that. And mostly it's because, well... Eric Stoltz is largely out of the movie for the most part, and he's just he's he's kind of the MacGuffin of the movie. If ever there was a human MacGuffin, and there have been mm-hmm. plenty in movies, but he is most definitely a human MacGuffin because um, they uh, well he gets inadvertently injured, uh, mm-hmm. which we'll we'll get there because uh, they have to run into our dear. And very, very Paraguayan uh, snake hunter Paul uh, Cerrone, <laughs> played by John Voight, uh, doing what I assume is a Paraguayan accent, or at least his attempt at one, where he <laughs> is supposedly stranded uh, on a boat in the river, and they have to help him out, and uh, he is supposedly going to kind of help, uh, well, they're going to help get him to the nearest uh, village or whatever, but that is when... Uh, the propeller is caught on a rope, and Eric Stoltz uh, tries to get it loose, and he is stung in the throat by a wasp inside of his scuba regulator, mm-hmm. which swells up his throat and leaves him unconscious. Don't you hate it when that happens? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Which, uh, I again, I make fun, but that's actually one of my favorite things about it, because at first I thought that... Um, I thought that John Voight had like sabotage. I knew that he was a bad guy from the start. You just look at him, you're like, yeah, this yeah. guy's up to no good. <laughs> um, but uh, I had thought that he sabotaged it or something. Um, but it was, uh, if I remember correctly, I don't think there was ever any hint that it had. It was just one of those things that happened. But what I like about that is that he you know, admitted does... this. He admitted the planting the wasp later on. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah, I, I figured I can remember if I remembered that correctly or not. But point being, what I like about that is that um, it's a because we're dealing with large animals here, uh, a very large animal that is the primary antagonist. But I like that it's a small thing that takes him out for most of this movie, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's something that's indicative to the region. And uh, you know, it just shows that there are t- a ton, a ton of things in that particular part of the world that can and will kill you if you uh, step in yep. it or get stung by it or look at it the wrong way or whatever, you know. But um, his big goal is to try to capture that darn giant <laughs> snake. That darn snake. Yeah. That darn yeah. snake. I know. <laughs> What were you yeah. going to say mm-hmm. there, uh, Jacob? Oh, no, I was just saying that darn snake. Never mind. I know. <laughs> Which actually, that the wasp in the uh, in the throat there, that uh, led to the uh, cricothi... How do you... Um, well, I thought it was a tracheotomy, but it was a... Um, that's the wrong kind of procedure. Cricothyrotomy... Uh, which uh-huh. is basically they just cut a, throw, a hole in your windpipe and stick a you know yep. little straw down there to help you breathe, yeah. which is very nasty. But it has it to is. Be done. Yeah, but, that's uh, not pleasant, but it helps them breathe <laughs> until the swelling went down. <laughs> yep, and I assume that it probably healed over. Uh, it seems to have, but. Um, 
Yeah, and then eventually, you know, just through the course of things, because the snake is out there doing what the snake does, one by one, they get picked off. First off mm -hmm. is the skipper. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, did we have any favorite snake kills as we get into that whole middle <laughs> section? Oh, um, there's there's at least four of them. <laughs> oh. I love that first snake kill at the very beginning where that whole building is coming apart. That snake is like terrorizing him before it comes and finishes. Him right. <laughs> yeah. Right. But the big thing about that is that uh, Mateo, the skipper who gets killed, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. Cerrone and Danny Trejo were working to try to catch animals, including the snake. And that's why <laughs> he's got such a, uh, a hard on to capture that there big snake because. Mm -hmm it will presumably bring him fame and fortune because if there's one thing we learn from mm -hmm. King Kong, it's that there are no dangers whatsoever from transporting large animals exactly. out of their natural habitats. Yeah, right. Exactly. Because, it's because totally those, safe. Yeah, it's totally safe yeah. because those bars, those uh, chains are made of chrome steel. That's how mm -hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And everyone, mention, he doesn't even have a crew that's even wor uh, uh, worth uh, uh, trying to capture this thing. And that's, <laughs> that is that is one notably bullshit thing about the film, you know. Just yeah, just the one, just the one thing. But uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, Carl Denham's uh, crew in whichever version of King Kong you want to throw out there, uh, his crew in King Kong was far better equipped. To handle, uh, even in its mm -hmm. fra fragile, bedraggled state, was mm -hmm. far better equipped to actually transport Kong back to New York than these people are to try to capture us yeah. a massive, massive anaconda that's far longer than the boat. You know, so it's like, well, what are they going to do? Are they going to coil it up? And isn't Owen Wilson's character supposedly uh, uh, just the love interest of this uh, uh, so called? Um, the uh, scientist, manager. the production manager, or whatever. Yeah, a he really he's is just the... along for the ride. And then no, he, he. I mean, he's the sound guy. Yeah, I mean, he's the, he is the sound he does, guy. But, he mean, does do something. Yeah. He is basically <laughs> okay. her boy. He is basically her boy toy, though. He's just kind of there, <laughs> uh, and he's just like, I'm like I think that was my favorite part where they're out there in the in the jungle and they're gonna get it on. And they thankfully don't because I was like, you realize that if you actually did that, that, that would be the least sexy thing on earth because you would get eaten alive by bugs. Uh, you know, it's 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 kind of the polar opposite of it's kind of the polar opposite of the uh, of the marital uh, sex scene in Braveheart where they're out there in the middle of the Scottish Highlands, and I'm like, you are gonna freeze to death, you know. And then this this one, it's like you're gonna be so unbelievably hot. And get bitten actually, by bugs. Actually, uh, as we as we um, as we uh, dis, uh, as we were doing the as I was doing my viewing, and I was watching the uh, you know I threw out there what I said was the uh, best line in the movie, and <laughs> I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but it was the part. Oh yeah, here we are. So there's uh, Westridge is jumps into the water. And he's like, last time I was in water like this, I was up all night picking leeches off my scrotum. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, I'll bet these two would have a similar story after that. Well, and my, <laughs> other, my other favorite bit with, uh, I think it was right before Eric Stoltz went in the water, was they talked about the one kind of uh, worm or whatever that was that goes up your urethra. <laughs> it's, it's a catfish. Uh, Catfish, excuse me, it's a but catfish. that that sort of thing has happened to people. It's a real thing. So very rare, very it's, rare. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's like one of those urban. Autics urban... Autics yeah. is one. <laughs> but I can I can say I can say <laughs> from having I can say from having worked in a fish store, one thing you will find abundantly in the Amazon are Corydoras catfishes, and. Um, I can say, I believe the Carandero is related to them distantly, but uh, I have gotten stabbed under the thumbnail by a Corydoras. It is unpleasant. 
to put it mildly. I'm sure. And I think if you were to have a, uh, a somewhat more um, uh, tender region, <laughs> it would not feel good. <laughs> yeah, your own throbbing python of love would be throbbing for different reasons. Uh, um, I but, would have uh, to say one of the, one of the best snake, uh, snake uh, kills was Owen Wilson being wrapped around, and then shortly later you see his body in the fucking <laughs> snake. I mean that is that is fucking brilliant of uh, uh, of snake <laughs> cinema. To be honest, I mean uh, 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 to me to show the pure horror being wrapped around and squeezed to death, and uh, and then. Uh, uh, and then you see his body has not yet been dissected yet, so, uh, so or or yeah. digested. Yeah. Which, uh, <laughs> before we go any further, we should give a shout out to the director that we haven't even mentioned yet, but it was Louis oh. uh, Yosa, I think is how you say it. Oh, uh, Luis, um, it's two Yosa? L's. So, uh, yeah. Luis Yosa. Yep, and uh, best known for Sniper, the specialist, and this film, Peruvian film director. So they got someone not from Brazil, well, but apparently he's got a lot of. Uh, I guess these are must be Peruvian TV shows to his credit. Yeah, Holy which crap. not not That's not awesome. Brazil, but you know, keeping it in the continent mm -hmm. at least, and. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Randy Edelman, uh, the composer, yeah. of course, uh, who did a lot of great films, including The Mask, and he took over for uh, Terry, uh, uh, Tra Trevor Jones, excuse me, not Terry Jones, Trevor Jones for uh, The Last of the Mohicans. Um, but, um, and yeah. Dragonheart and Dragonheart Vengeance, so. Yeah. Got quite a quite a lot of accomplished people in this movie, but uh, yeah, and that's around this time as people are getting killed off by the snake, it becomes clear that our dear uh, John Voight has nefarious intentions at heart, and that his uh, attempts to lure them supposedly to the hospital are in fact to try to get them to be on the trail of and in the uh, feeding grounds of the anaconda because he wants to capture it, which leads uh, after the death of Owen Wilson, that is where they uh, tie him up because as Jennifer <coughs> Lopez says, hasn't there been enough killing? And uh, of course that's going to come back to bite him in the ass as it does because the people in these movies never just put a bullet in the bad guy's head when they have a chance. Um, nope. Which I mean, you know, you They're put him in mercenaries. the when you put him in that river, it's like the snake's going to eat the evidence before too long. Uh, in, but in all fairness, in movies like this, there's never too much killing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, True. but uh, yeah, that's where uh, he gets tied up. They head over to the waterfall. Uh, and this mm -hmm. part also did remind me of uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon because, well, besides them going upriver, the Amazon River at that, but they encounter a particular part of the water, whether it's a lake or, or the, the actual Black Lagoon or, in this case, the waterfall, and they, have to, they get stuck and they have to figure out a way to wench themselves loose. And that uh, also happens in Creature from the Black Lagoon. And, of course, that's where um, Denise, uh, she tries to get revenge for Gary's death, Owen Wilson's death, but that's where John Voight kills her. And uh, that's when shit really starts to come unglued. <laughs> Because yep. things were so because things were so under because, control before. Because the sna uh, the snake they thought they'd killed was not the mama. That's right. <laughs> nope. Not the mama. Yeah. <laughs> kind of the bigger deal. Of the snake, <laughs> there are there are multiple snakes. That's right. Yep. yep. Which uh, well, yeah, when, they when they first blow up that bri uh, bridge, right? Or whatever, they, they they get all these like tons of baby snakes. It's and, rain. Uh, you get the snake. And then you get this little anaconda that's like stuck on uh, Jonathan Hyde's finger, and right. I love how he's just whining like a little bitch uh, yeah. about get, get, getting the snake off. And he, John Voight, just walks up, 
pulls him up. He's like, eh, it's just a little baby. Yeah. <laughs> which, which again, that part with all the baby snakes or smaller <laughs> snakes, of course, mm-hmm. there's going to be a shitload of them around, you know? Uh, yeah. And uh, which, uh, now here's a part that we've forgotten to mention. Uh, I had kind of hoped that it would have played a bigger part in the movie than it ultimately does. But so the whole reason why they go down to the Amazon in the first place is to record the uh, Shurashamas tribe. Um, mm-hmm. And in their lore, they have a snake god that they worship. Uh, and uh, I had I had really hoped that that would amount to more than it ultimately does. I mean, all it really does is say, oh, gee whiz, there's a giant snake in the water, which we already kind of knew because it's the title of the movie. And uh, <laughs> because even if that wasn't there, we would have found it out anyway because, well, in the Amazon and in Australia and other wild really wild out of the way places animals can grow really big so it's like you know Mm -hmm. ultimately uh ultimately it doesn't really amount to much other than the only thing i noticed was that when spoilers when john void actually does get killed by the end the way that he is wrapped up and has his head about to get swallowed the position the position of his figure is similar to that statue that they that they sail past uh, that was about yeah. the only thing I could think oh, of that really, that. yeah, it was pretty, that oh, part yeah. was cool. That's I just cool. wish that I, it was cool. I just wish that that particular part of the book. Uh, the other cool. thing that was kind of cool was, uh, was when he spit him right back out and he winked at her. Yep. I know, which I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, how in the hell does that happen? But, uh, <laughs> you know, the, uh, but, but like, I just, for me personally, as a fan of, you know, uh, lore and a fan of uh, you know various belief systems of different cultures and stuff. Mm-hmm. I kind of would have liked for that to have amounted to more, but I guess that the fact that his body being positioned in very much that same way because the statue looked like it was about to get eaten by the snake, also except that it was more in like a sh- shamanic uh, kind of pose. So it was a little less like victim as much as it's like this guy has become one with the snake kind of thing. Um, That's what the statue was looking like. So I guess it's more of like an ironic counterpoint that he got the snake, but he's about to get eaten by the snake. And all of that was great. I just would have liked for that aspect to have been a little bit more front and center. Hmm. But um, at any rate. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, the... uh, you know, that's where we've got some more some more snake action for you. Uh, <laughs> and that's with, uh, yeah, that was, uh, I'm trying Ice to remember Cube when does. Yeah, because Jennifer Lopez. they're the only ones that are largely left alive uh, besides Eric Stoltz, who only right. comes back in to the play at the very end. But, yeah. Uh, you know the the bit mm-hmm. that stuck out in my mind was so they get to that uh, that area with all the fuel because again that's another thing we forgot to mention. So with the explosion there, they lost a lot of their fuel, um, mm-hmm. and so they were running low on gas on the river there. And so they had to stop off on that one spot to try to find some fuel that could uh, get them back to civilization. And that's where uh, uh, John Voigt. Uh, he ties the two of them up and uses uh, monkey's blood, which is just delicious, uh, to try <laughs> to you know make them extra appetizing for the second much larger anaconda. And at first, it looks like they're go- uh, they're going to be wrapped uh, up and uh, uh, and uh, stowed away for winter. But uh, uh, I-, I guess, uh, uh, dude, when he co- uh, goes up high on that ladder um he waits for the right moment and uh Mm -hmm. collapses that net on the snake and uh, uh, but uh, but he uh, unfortunately he didn't tie it up like very well (laughs) which um well and the other thing that uh we forgot to mention was that there is a point where (laughs) john voight at first looks like he's dead because he got the uh the tranquilizer dart uh right 
But then that wasn't enough to do him in because, of course, he's the main bad guy. So, of course, the snake has to get him because that's oh, yeah. how these movies work. Um, <laughs> but uh, my favorite, probably my favorite shot, my favorite moment uh, is the uh, snake cam where you see his head getting swallowed mm-hmm. up. Um, but that's from cool you know, the, that was really that was a good that, shot. That was really yeah. gross, but I mean that as a as the ultimate it, compliment. Yeah, it was definitely grody. <laughs> I know. Plus, like when he gets thrown back up, uh, he's like, yeah. I think I think that ultimately is like my favorite part in the whole film when he gets spit right back up and then he winks like Popeye. It's like, yeah. <laughs> It's it, it's like the, uh, then you think of going eh, go, 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 or some shit like that. Yeah, which can you imagine Popeye in this movie? He probably would have torn that snake in half after eating his spinach. <laughs> um, but that of course, and again because this is a '90s action movie, something's got to blow up at the end, and that's uh, because they're in the in the fuel house there. That's why they gotta. Um, you know, the, you got your pickaxe with Ice Cube there. You got your <laughs> snake action. You got J Lo running around. Uh, you got uh, the fuel catching fire. You got explosions. You got all kinds of good stuff. You got a flaming snake, uh, which mm-hmm. was a pretty cool sight, I have to say. Yeah. Um, I never thought I would see that. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. nor did I ever think that I would encounter a roaring snake or a shrieking snake or whatever <laughs> sound that a, was. A, a vocal sm- a snake. Which yeah. Apparent, uh, now, this is uh, where the science that. kind of fails. No. <laughs> snakes, most snakes, in fact, there's only one snake, I, I think, no snakes. That, uh, that, that makes uh, makes sounds, and it's not this sound. <laughs> the well, they can, they can hiss, the but they can't, uh, they can't, like, vocalize in that way. Well, most <laughs> snakes can talk, but supposedly we can't hear the uh, the way they talk. It's so high pitched that uh, that um, our uh, our hearing can. I I looked it up before uh, before we uh, actually uh, 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 went on uh, <laughs> uh, because uh, there was something about uh, about the fact that, uh, that snakes could not vocally speak, but there are some snakes that actually. Can speak. They uh, they just speak in the uh, that in just like vibrations in, or it's something. Uh, it, it's like um, uh, very high pitched. Humans cannot hear them. And part uh, uh, that's the point. Yeah, it's crystal <laughs> tongue. There you go. Right. Well, the uh, um, but that this this whole thing did the the fact that the snake made a sound reminded me a lot of like in. Jaws the revenge when the shark roars and it's like, come <laughs> on, dude. It's like, well, what what evolutionary <laughs> purpose does it serve for a shark to roar, let alone a snake to shriek around and you know, because yep. again, right. hissing is one thing, but uh, you know, or rattling a, a rattle, <laughs> oh. if you're a rattlesnake, you know, that's one thing, but a, a snake shrieking in that kind of voice, it's like, you know, <laughs> what evolutionary it's more cinematically for. interesting right yeah i guess so <laughs> that's the Which, idea uh, you, want, uh, you want to have the snake if you, the snake is your peak villain that snake has got to be able to vocalize its villainry well if we're talking about snake, <laughs> if we're talking about snakes and speaking and it was the night dramatic like, effect but at the same time it's kind of eh. it's pretty bullshit yeah. like if, well, uh, the word that Dave used was speaking, and it's like, well, this was the 90s, and, you know, I'm mm-hmm. thinking of movies like Homeward Bound and stuff. If they wanted to mm-hmm. have this big speak, give him Joe Pesci's voice. That would have been <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been Or, or, or the snake could be Christopher Walken. Oh, <laughs> my God. Oh. It's, it's J-Lo. That would have been a very uh, different Big, take on the movie. Oh, jeez! And he barfs John Boyd up. Oh, he didn't agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> he upset my stomach. 
but uh, yeah, so that happens. Uh, which and uh, <laughs> of course, uh, Eric Stoltz comes back to life right in the nick of time. Of uh, and he can, he doesn't, he doesn't sound like that. Uh, he seems to have more or less recovered, um, mm -hmm. and, which does kind of negate the whole purpose of them having to get back so urgently to the yeah. hospital. So I guess that the poison must not have been I all that better. Bad. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> that, that was the one thing that I was like, oh, gee whiz. So that kind of negates the whole reason to have to get him to the hospital right away. He just needed a hole in the throat, which you I guess you didn't see, cause any debilitating long-term injuries of any kind. You see, this, it, we are seeing firsthand that this is a movie <laughs> that when you try to apply logic, it becomes a slippery slope mm -hmm. very, very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Just as slippery as the titular snake, perhaps. Um, but, but there is one thing about the film that I did. I was like, thank you for doing this because uh -huh. we, we did expose a little bit of the bullshit with uh, Eric Stoltz's condition being so severe we have to get him back only to find out, oh, wait, it got better on its own with a little hole in the throat. But the thing that they did right... Uh, was that the whole purpose for going down here was not in vain because they did get some footage of the tribe that they came down there mm -hmm. to uh, yep. to film, albeit mm -hmm. with just camera and probably shitty uh, in-camera audio and without a snooty British talent. But they have J-Lo, who is a far better in-camera talent anyway mm -hmm. that I think most mm -hmm. of us would rather be watching anyway. Um so, but I was and, just, that, and and and, and I'm probably not alone in that. I would like to hear her do a snooty British accent, or at least attempt oh. at it. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, you know, but I was just glad that that part of the movie that they didn't drop the ball on that one because I really mm -hmm. was afraid that they would. And if they mm -hmm. had, then I would have been like, oh come on! So the whole thing was entirely pointless. But I was like, okay, well, they came away with something amidst uh, mm -hmm. the amidst this shit show <laughs> of an expedition, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know, with all these dead crew members and stuff. You'd have thought it was Cannibal Holocaust, also in the Amazon, mm -hmm. um, and with but with less animal death. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I mean, that is essentially the plot, um, but. For my money, I think it is a very entertaining, essentially B movie, but with A movie stars and a more or less A movie budget. Um, it doesn't take itself too seriously, uh, and it has some definitely memorable moments and uh, mm -hmm. some. Again, I just like the setting, and I, I miss movies like that that were adventure stories that also happen to have horrific elements to them. Mm -hmm. adventure stories that didn't have to take place on fantastical worlds because the more that you re learn about nature i'm sure you can attest to this uh dustin the more that you learn about nature the more that you learn about just how wondrous our own planet really is and how mm -hmm. if we just yeah. looked hard enough we would realize that we don't need to go to another planet to experience the fantastical it's right here in our own backyard well, for now, anyway. Indeed. Well, yeah, if we want to die, we can go with places here that would kill us yep. very quickly. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, technically, every, anywhere you go has something out there that'll want to kill you. Yeah, I was going to say, when you were talking about that wasp earlier, depending on who you are, eh, you, you could go anywhere and get a wasp in your throat and, and, and be boned, you know? Yeah. It, it, it depends on the person, but... <laughs> now here's here's some interesting uh, little bit of trivia here that I'm just now finding out about. Hmm? Guess who were the two first choices for uh, J Lo's part? I remember seeing that and I forgot already. Oh. They they're not they're not necessarily ones you would expect. No. I, I oh yeah. But yeah, I certainly wouldn't have expected it, but. Apparently, the first two choices were Gillian Anderson, a.k.a. Yeah. Agent Scully from the X-Files, uh -huh. and Juliana Margulies from ER. Mm -hmm. They were the first choices, but then but they, they, were named pa time. They, they passed due to scheduling conflicts with their shows, mm -hmm. and so J-Lo was cast, which, quite frankly, mm -hmm. I 
would have a hard time seeing either of those two in this role, or rather, if they were, then it would have had a different feel. I think the fact that J-Lo is in here kind of helps give it more uh, well, more be- gravitas, I guess, and more of like a reason for, I don't know, it just seems to fit better. Like, I could imagine her like not being afraid to get down and dirty with uh, doing this kind of documentary. If the other two did it, it might come across as a bit more academic, you know, not to say mm. that they couldn't play, you know, tough female characters, but like this, the, yeah, and not to say that they wouldn't be documentarians, but it's like, would they necessarily be the type of person to go down to the Amazon and do all this stuff, even without, you know, giant anacondas running around? Um, I don't know if I necessarily would have bought them as being those kinds of people, and I think I would for JLo. Um, and then meanwhile, um, Jean Reno was considered for the uh, John Voight's part. That would have been a whole different movie. Jean Reno, Tommy Lee Jones, Sean Connery, and John Malkovich. Now, of the bunch, Malkovich would have been an interesting yeah. choice. Yeah, he would have. I, I, I kind of feel like though, I feel yeah. like though, Mal- I feel like what what Malkovich what could have been Malkovich's role probably yeah. went, probably probably carried over into Con Air. Yeah, could be. Which. Yeah. Uh, and this was this was not a Michael Crichton novel or anything. It didn't have a it mm-hmm. did not have a pre existing uh, medium no. from which it was adapted. But I did think a little bit about Congo in the sense of like another mm. campy creature film with you know Westerners going on a exotic expedition and that kind of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Also with a somewhat cheesy tone, but uh, mm-hmm. you know it's. But again, no mention of Christopher Walken, which I still say, no. you know, if he'd have been in this movie, it would have been like, you put either him or Nicolas Cage in this thing would have ascended yeah. to the heavens, you know. I was um, wondering when someone was going to mention Nick Cage. I was trying to think what role he'd be best for. Well, he, he <laughs> probably Anaconda. could have. Oh, yeah, huh? he, could play, he, could, he could play the Anaconda. Oh, yeah, uh, I bet. But, like, I mean, if he'd have played the villain, I mean, I think he could have been pretty damn good, too. Now, keep in mind that this was during, mm-hmm. like, the height of his star power, you know. So mm-hmm. he was, like, headlining these major motion pictures. Like, this was the mm-hmm. same year as Face Off and, you know, City of Angels is the very mm-hmm. next year. That made a shitload of money. Uh, this is back mm-hmm. before he got into all his money troubles and had to do movies like Primal, yeah. which... Uh, which I saw, and uh, aside mm-hmm. from the bad CGI animals, it's actually not too bad. Um, and you just mentioned Con Air. I mean, yeah. this was right before that, too. Yep, Con Air. Well, same year as Con Air. But, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, this movie, uh, it was a box office success, but it, like I mentioned before, it got a Worst Picture Razzie mm-hmm. nomination, Worst Director, Worst Screenplay, uh, worst actor for John Voight, worst screen couple for John Voight in the animatronic Anaconda, and worst new star, <laughs> worst, worst new star for the there. animatronic Anaconda. <laughs> uh, and again, this was the year of Ooh. Batman and Robin, which somehow escaped uh, almost entirely unscathed that year, uh, hmm. because the big winner that year was The Postman with Kevin Costner, <laughs> and yet I highly doubt that kids today even know what that movie is. Meanwhile, everybody and their mother knows what Batman and Robin is. Yeah, and they know what Anaconda is. Yeah, yep. exactly. And and I dare say people hold this movie in higher esteem than they do even Batman and Robin, even, oh, though, even though Batman and Robin has its own ironic fan base. <laughs> Hey, um, there's nothing wrong with Batman and Robin. It's probably one of the greatest films of that. all time. Well, but that's what I mean, though, is that its fan base is precisely for people who love to bitch and moan about it. Whereas this movie, like, people like it precisely because of how cheesy it is. But, mm-hmm. you know, I just find that funny that this little creature feature got all that, uh, all that notice mm-hmm. uh, back then. But happier times, happier times, I think, <laughs> because the, if you looked at the Razzie nominees from last mm-hmm. year, uh, not quite as cheery, not quite as carefree, a um, mm. bit covering a bit more serious topics, like the one that actually won Worst Picture of 2020. Uh, and so then you think about, you know, giant anaconda movies, and it's like a uh, more innocent time. But, <laughs> uh, 
But no, no worst actress nominee uh, nomination for Jennifer Lopez for this film. Good deal. The worst, the worst actress wins would come later, uh, especially with Gigli, but none for this movie. <laughs> and good thing, uh, because I don't think she deserves it for this movie. Sadly, still have not seen Gigli. We got to cover yeah. that for this show. I've never watched it either, but I've wanted to for I've quite a long things. time. I've actually heard that I've, 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 heard from, I've heard from a lot of people that it's not as bad as people say. Um, it's I've, not as bad, but it's not good either. Yeah. <laughs> Which, and that, one, that one did have Christopher Walken in it. Why didn't right. that movie have Christopher Walken in it? And, you know, speaking of silly creature features, I'm a little surprised we haven't made much move to cover. Uh, Carrie were one of the few credits I recognized on her list was a film that I, strangely enough, have seen and own, uh, which was Eight-Legged Freaks. Oh, that's a great movie. <laughs> that's a pretty good that was fun. <laughs> that's a really That's a really fun, like, deliberate right. movie yeah uh, and uh and you know um what's his name arquette david arquette david know, arquette yeah he's just so getting all bug, bug eyed yeah. and freaky in this film yeah um and of course this film you know despite getting all the razzies and all the this and that uh did spawn a franchise it spawned a sequel anacondas plural uh, the Hunt for the Blood Orchid, which I remembered seeing the trailers for all over the place back in 2004 mm -hmm. and back when Fandango, when they did those uh, um, behind the movies, kind of either it was, no, sorry, it was Regal. They did those behind the movies uh, segments before even the trailer started and they featured this mm -hmm. movie all over the place. And then uh, Anaconda 3 Offspring, Anaconda's Trail of Blood, and the crossover that everyone was waiting for so eagerly, Lake Placid versus Anaconda. <laughs> yeah. Not the killer, as bad as you'd expect. The Killer Croc versus the Killer Snake. But but apparently the Croc is known as the Lake. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I, could, I could hear the James Rolfe voice in my head. Croc of shit. <laughs> okay, so so that one does need to be have the uh, the the creature voices with your Christopher Walken Anaconda going up against the Betty White crocodile. Uh, <laughs> and it has to be a love story. <laughs> Or maybe a love hate story. <laughs> that wow. sounds like that sounds like the greatest movie ever made if that were to happen. Um, which uh, we should mention. So we mentioned the uh, animatronic anaconda, mm -hmm. which is most of what you see whenever you do see the anaconda. Though you do see. Some CGI with the Anaconda, which, as we mentioned mm -hmm. before, hasn't really aged the best, but it has not aged the worst out of all the CGI I've seen from that period. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, some of the worst CGI I've ever seen from an otherwise great film in the same year as this was when the plane, the when Air Force One crashes into the ocean from yeah. the movie Air Force One, that has to be some of the worst CGI I've ever seen in an otherwise fantastic film, which you know doesn't really need much CGI, but they did for that particular shot. But I was like, wow, was that bad? Like, Asylum CGI looks better than this. Um, and this, and this is... Python. <laughs> well, and and this, this, is, this is not remotely a fantastic film, not by any stretch of the imagination, but this also came out the same year as Mortal Kombat Annihilation, and I would say yeah. the CGI is much better here. I was going to say, I mean, the, the CGI, again, it hasn't aged the best, but it's nowhere near the worst, which is another point I'm trying to make there. And partially why that is is because they do use a physical snake for most of the time that they yes. need to. Yeah, animatronic. Mm -hmm. CGI in the sequels is type. far worse, like easily <laughs> far worse. Yeah, all the sequels were, were straight to video, so that's also. Uh... Yeah. Well, to be fair, for, they did have for like Anacondas. The first be, sequel. Be, the first sequel was a lot better. Um, to be fair, uh, three and four did have like ten percent of the budget. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, the snakes look Blood Orchid, absolutely um... horrible in those. Blood Orchid was good. 
Um, I have the 88 films uh, Anaconda Quadrilogy on Blu-ray. I need um, to get that. Yeah, I think it just went out of print, so better hurry up. Yeah, probably. It, 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 it came with a bunch Friday. of it came with a bunch of really good essays on animal horror. Yeah, um, which so, is, you, you mentioned books, you, you mentioned the reptile genre, uh, which I was sort of like, you know, that is a rather underserved genre because uh, we've had ten billion shark movies, uh, if you want to call that a genre rather than just the killer animal genre. Uh, but it's like we've had 10 billion shark movies and not to say that we haven't had 10 billion snake movies but it's like the shark movies seem to live in our collective uh consciousness a little bit more than the snake films even though the only way you're going to run into a shark is if you're out there in the middle of the ocean whereas you could walk outside and encounter a snake like you know right now even if you're in the desert mm -hmm. you can encounter one the only Doesn't place you really couldn't well, the only place that you really couldn't is if you live in the in the tundra or something, you know, someplace right. where it's really cold. Antarctica. Oh. <laughs> right, there are no none in... from people. Oh, no. There are no snakes in Antarctica. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So the, uh, but yeah, the CGI is nowhere near the worst. Uh, Nowhere near the best, but I do think mm -hmm. the animatronic anaconda, they wisely use that more than they mm -hmm. use the CGI. The animatronic uh, looks pretty good. Um, it uh, seems to do what it needs to do as far as emoting as much as a uh, snake can emote. <laughs> uh, sometimes a little too much with the Frank Welker sounds. Uh, but uh, there were a few bits where... Uh, so the snake, the CGI snake, is moving plenty fast through the water, which is, you know, fine because, you know, if a snake's going to move fast, you know, probably do it through the water. But then there's that one part towards the end where the CGI snake just zooms across the screen. Yeah, at, that ain't happening. Abnormally fast speed. Say, so how, how fast do anacondas move? Not that fast, <laughs> especially not on land. That's yeah. a viper strike. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, did this anaconda swallow speedy gonzalez <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh, but uh you know that part i was like oh yeah right uh you know this giant snake i could buy but one that moves that fast no yeah. it could it be lit on fire it'd be you know like freddy krueger snake but uh this is just going too far An anacondas are considered semi-aquatic they they use they do not spend a great deal of time on land yeah. And they would not be able to move that fast by any means. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Um, it's, a very bulky, it's a very bulky, yeah, yes. heavy animal. Yeah. Right. Well, an, an anaconda and a boa constrictor also, you know, their whole thing is squeezing, you know. A boa could move much, much, much faster on land than an anaconda, and even that wouldn't move that fast. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if many snakes yeah. that can move that fast. Uh, Black Raider nah. maybe. But maybe. <laughs> But Mamba much maybe smaller, uh, than a uh, anaconda in this movie. Yeah. Actually, then again, if I saw a black racer get that big. That'd be uh, a well. Then snake. again, uh, yeah. <laughs> when you're when you're then again when your snake is active and on the move, especially when you see someone like Jennifer Lopez, things go faster than you necessarily want them to, and you're left <laughs> disappointed by the end. Uh, <laughs> Although I was certainly, uh, I was certainly not disappointed by the ending of this film. Far from it. It was Jennifer uh, Lopez that sped the snake up. It was just. I was gonna story. say, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> but uh, which and, and speaking of which, uh, you notice also that on the original theatrical poster of the film, which is a great poster, but you see just the snake's eyes poking out against black there, mm -hmm. which is very intimidating. Uh, mm -hmm. But you notice that unlike other posters of even the 90s, let alone posters of other eras, but the 90s, you know, the, the post-Scream uh, posters, they were all about we have to arrange the cast in a very specific way and kind of yep. have that, uh, you know, the actors poking out against black or maybe them in black and white and then they're all arranged in a very specific way. Uh, if you look up, you know, slasher posters from the nineties, you'll know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And you, they could have just as easily done that for the star power that's in this film. But again, it's worth noting that the people that are stars now were not quite the stars that they are now. They weren't, 
quite that way then. So they were trying to really uh, hammer home the the snake as the star, which technically well, is still the case. But I think, as, I as, think Roger, as, Roger Cor- as Roger Corman once said, the monster is always bigger than the leading lady. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You could make the you could make the argument that John Voight was star power for this film because oh, he man. has he has been in some high profile going all the way back to the seventies and like he said you know Eric Stoltz you know he may have been a career just left of being noticed but still he, I know. he, he he been around for a while. Well, but it's, um, it's just an interesting thing to me because right. then you, you contrast right. the original poster with the right. later Blu-ray cover, uh, right. which has like J Lo front and center. It's right. got Ice Cube front and center. It's got John Voight mm. front and center. It's, like, oh, yeah. it's, it's kind of like how when Leprechaun came out, you know, the Leprechaun right. was, was front and center on on the on the. Right. Right. And then Jennifer right. Aniston was front and center later on because exactly. he became a big star. Yeah. But right. ain't that just amusing how the times change? Um, right. But I, uh, I also yeah. remember a weird little tidbit about the time. Um, not only was uh, Jennifer Lopez still an unknown quantity for the most part as an actress, there was a lot of controversy. A lot of controversy when she was cast as Selena, and oh, I think no. that may that yeah. the blowback may have also caused them to downplay her a little bit in the initial. Uh, you know, it, it, it's possible they might have cast her before they realized. Wait a minute, we're going to be dealing with some angry people. <laughs> yeah, well, we, <laughs> which we is also, stupid. It but, is stupid, but we also but, forget. Uh, Right. The, again, this was the same year as U Turn, the uh, Oliver Stone film that she uh-huh. was in, and uh, she had been in Money Train, and also okay. um, yeah. she, uh, yeah, I was gonna say she uh, worked with the the great uh, Francis Ford Coppola on what was surely his crowning glory, Jack. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, but she had a few, you know, notable credits to her name, you know, mm-hmm. albeit in. You know, either the 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 girl part uh, in certain right. movies, or a relatively small part in a movie that you know is considered to be one of the worst uh, Francis Ford Coppola movies. But it was a Francis Ford Coppola <laughs> movie, and it's you know that's I had policy. totally forgotten that. <laughs> but it, it is a Francis Ford Coppola film, so you know yeah. there's, that should not be discounted that she uh, got to be in that lofty of company even back then. Mm-hmm. Um, which we did mention the music a little bit. Um, I think uh, it's doesn't get quite the praise that it deserves. I think I don't think Randy mm-hmm. uh, Edelman gets the praise that he deserves. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, let's see, so we covered visual effects, music. Uh, any favorite scenes that anybody had to throw out there? We mentioned a few of them already. I think my favorite scene is the finale. Mm-hmm. Uh, where we get like explosions and snakes flying through the air. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you got snake on fire, it's like you know where can you go from there? <laughs> right. It looks very convincing. Like I think they burned an animatronic for that. Yeah, probably. Hmm. hmm. I think my favorite huh? scene is probably uh, the snake cam and the throat there. Just because of how nasty mm. that is, uh, but then as far as like my favorite line of dialogue, uh, I think it's when they're about to get it on in the uh, in the juggle. He's like, "Oh wow!" <laughs> in, in that classical <laughs> Owen Wilson fashion that the ladies just can't resist. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, I think I already said what my favorite line was. I don't know if I have a favorite, favorite scene. There's a few good ones, you know. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, think oh, my, yeah. I think my two favorite were, uh, were, were definitely the old Owen Wilson body shot and uh, the uh, the spitting out and the winking of the eye. That, uh, those are my two favorites. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which uh, I does make you wonder if he is uh, he was having those post mortem spasms or if he was indeed winking. <laughs> I guess right. that that's, that's part of the the intricate subtext of this film. 
which yes. I, and I did, I did uh, and I did point out a little bit of intricate subtext with the statue thing that nobody else picked up on. Right. So I, I mean, it sounds like a it sounds like a joke, but it's not. Ha. <laughs> I, I had a couple of things that I did like uh, when I um, uh, when I watched this. Uh, of course, my favorite scene being uh, the first scene, though. I don't know why. I just thought that is a a pretty cool way of introducing it. Uh, kind mm -hmm. of kind of throws out both things. Like um, I, I think if you get past that very first scene in the movie you'll know how you're going to take the rest of the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I like that. It's a good way of defining what you're going to be seeing throughout that. Yeah. Well, first first scenes have to set up the tone, and it seems like it sets up the tone fairly well. Um, so anybody else have any final thoughts on this masterpiece? Of snakery. Um, no. well, I did, I, actually, didn't, actually, it was didn't get my my favorite. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, for me, I, oh god, I'd probably say when uh, you know the inside of the snake's mouth, inside of the snake's mouth, the uh, snake's uh, the like, snake cam. Yeah, snake cam. I would say yeah, snake cam, and then also seeing uh, John Voight get uh, regurgitated. Yeah, which is pretty nasty. <laughs> Cool. Well, uh, let it be known, boys and girls, that uh, when all is fair in love and war, snakes will still come and swallow you whole. Even I think on those a plane. are those. Yep. <laughs> even, uh, whether on a plane or in their natural habitat, snakes will do what snakes mm. will do. <laughs> I disagree. It, 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 airplanes it are snakes' natural habitat. That's true, no. but uh, <laughs> it it, mat it matters not whether you are d the, a Danny Trejo, a John Voight, an Ice Cube, or a Jennifer Lopez. We are all s equals on this snake-like earth. Yeah, all men are created equal in the eyes of the snake. <laughs> all right, Alrighty, so so next we have uh, another f uh, f uh, film in, or uh, in order. Uh, so uh, stay tuned uh, to join us on our Inside Movies Galore channel where we will be dis discussing aberration. So thank yes. you, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't go out into the jungle anytime soon. <laughs> Try to find your wild snake. And uh, <laughs> we'll... Uh, We'll check back with you and uh, see what you thought of our uh, discussion here. So, enjoy. Well, right. if, you, if you ever go <laughs> looking for the giant anaconda again, you needn't look any further than your own backyard because if it isn't there, you never lost it to begin with. <laughs> All right, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you for having me today. No.